Okay, this is the second part of today's uh, lesson segment and another 15 minutes of uh, discussion, which I think you'll find interesting on the uh, preface to a picture of Dwayne Gray, which is kind of touched on this before the end of, uh, before the beginning of break. And, um, and I don't know if we really covered this in, uh, as much as I would have wanted to. So I thought it would be good to start here and move our way forward from uh, week, the end of week eight to week uh, nine. And then we, we continue onward to the end of the semester, uh, I'm assuming. Uh, unless otherwise notified that we go back into class, uh, which at this point I'm not really sure that's going to be the case. So um, be prepared to continue with this class uh, on the uh, online interface and use these uh, these guided discussions on uh, the on these video chats to help you orientate yourself with the readings and the assignments that we do in class. So. All right, so today, for this segment, we're going to talk about uh, our goal and for this segment is to explore genre and aesthetic movement for art for art's sake, to preview and contextualize literary artworks from the text, to identify and elaborate on literary terms such as epigrams and epiphany. And you're, after participating in this lesson, you will be able to uh, guide, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, my job here is to guide you in synthesizing issues relating to Wilde's preface to a picture of Dorian Gray and Joyce's short story Araby. You will apply Wilde's concept of art by encouraging, uh, by with responses to artworks of their, uh, uh, which I was, well, which I have presented to you in a packet, which I have uploaded on the on the. On the course canvas course um, uh, uh, module and just and utilize and, and so usually this would have been a group exercise but since it's not possible for that to happen synchronously we will do this you'll do this individually um, so um, the first thing to do um, is I'm going to give you an overview of the picture of Dorian Gray and then I'm going to read the, the the epigrams out loud and then we're going to talk about the uh, epigrams. Um, so the preface to a picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Have you ever heard about before of Oscar Wilde and the novel of the picture of Dorian Gray? If so, you may have heard that this story is about a portrait painter named Basil who finds his perfect subject in a man named Dorian Gray. Essentially, after the portrait is painted, Dorian wishes that he can keep his likeness in the picture forever. Then the curse of the picture is that it grows old while Dorian remains forever young. In the end, the curse is lifted when Dorian dies and the picture restores to its original stage. Um, the novel by Dorian Gray con is considered the, uh, considers the content of, wor of, of a wor artwork and the way artwork is transmitted. Uh, for example, the moral life of man forms part of the artist's main subject matter. That means what the content of the artwork is about. For Dorian, the morality of art consists of a perfect use or technique of an imperfect medium. Medium is the way that the artwork is transmitted, e.g. through pencil, guitar, or paintbrush. Art demands a perfect technique. Uh, language must be considered a medium that is not perfect. So let's, um, before we uh, get into the questions, <clears throat> I'm going to read to you uh, out loud the the epigrams from the this preface the preface is the beginning of uh, precedes the beginning of the novel and it uh, it serves as a kind of a entry uh, as a kind of introduction to what the the content of the novel is going to be about so um <clears throat> uh okay um so the artist is the creator of beautiful things. To reveal art and conceal the artist is the art's, art's aim. The critic is he who can translate into another manner or new material his impression of beautiful things. The highest as the lowest form of criticism is a mode of autobiography. Those who find ugly meanings in beautiful things are corrupt without being charming. This is a fault. Those who find beautiful meanings in beautiful things are the cultivated. For these, there is hope. They are the elect to whom beautiful things mean only beauty. There is no such thing as a moral or an immoral book. 
books are well written or badly written, that is all. The 19th century dislike of realism is the rage of Caliban seeing his own face in a glass. The 19th century dislike of romanticism is the rage of Caliban not seeing his own face in a glass. The moral life of man forms part of the subject matter of the artist, but the morality of art consists in the perfect use of an imperfect medium. No artist desires to prove anything. Even things that are true can be proved. No artist has ethical sympathies. An ethical sympathy in an artist is an unpardonable mannerism of style. No artist is ever morbid. The artist can express everything. Thought and language are to the artist instruments of an art. Vice and virtue are to the artist materials for an art. From the point of view of form, the type of all the arts is the art of the musician. From the point of view of feeling, the actor's craft is the type. All art is at once surface and symbol. Those who go beneath the surface do so at their own peril. Those who read the symbol do so at their own peril. It is the spectator and not life that art really mirrors. Diversity of opinion about a work of art shows that the work is new, complex, and vital. When critics disagree that the artist is in accord with himself, we can forgive a man for making a useful thing as long as he does not admire it. The only excuse for making a useless thing is that one admires it intensely. All art is quite useless. So, this, this, uh, these um, little sentences are considered to be epigrams. He wrote these in the form of, what is an epigram? Okay, an epigram are, are epigrams are short, concise, and witty sayings, ingenuously, ex ingenuously expressed, brief, memorable, sort of surprising, or satirical statements. These epigrams express the major points of Oscar Wilde's aesthetic philosophy. The epigrams praise beauty and reject the notion that art serves a moral purpose. Okay, uh, let's uh, go into um, art as surface and symbol. Examine if the premise of Dorian Gray holds true by applying the quote, art is at once surface and symbol. Those who go beneath the surface do so at their own peril. Um, all right, so let's think about, before we get into the questions, um, Let's, let's take a look. I'm gonna have, you might, you'll notice that there's a handout too that I've uploaded to Canvas, which is called Art Activity, Art is Surface versus Symbol. You'll notice that on page true, two, you'll have an illustration of that you may or may not be familiar with. It's called Old Woman, Young Lady. And um, the so what you could do in this moment, in these few moments while uh, we're going over this, is think about the surface impression or quality of what you're seeing. Is there a symbolic level of meaning that you can associate with the artwork or do you just appreciate it? Now, when you look at this illustration of the young woman, old lady, you might think that you see one um, image, one side of the image which is uh, the old woman, uh, or perhaps you see the young woman first. And you'll notice that uh, the old woman is uh, kind of a, uh, uh, has a large beak of a nose and she has more of a crone's chin and she's wearing a shawl. Um, whereas the young woman is wearing, uh, is, a, is a silhouette of a young woman. You can see her eyelash and her nose and the, the curvature of her, of her of cheekbones. And she's wearing a fur coat, okay? So either way, your eye may rest on one or the other image. And this is actually called an optical illusion, whereas, you know, it's, it's you can see, it tricks your eye into thinking that there is one image only, but yeah, there's two, there's two simultaneous images. On the next page, you'll see a similar image of a duck rat, uh, uh, called duck rabbit. And in this case, you see a duck. If you see a duck, look at the image and think of the duck's beak as a rabbit ears. If you see a rabbit, think of the rabbit's ears as a beak of a duck. So this is sort of a, a, an exercise where you have to think about, in both cases, the overall image, the total image, not just one part of the image, which is otherwise called the gestalt effect. Um, in that sense, you have to... Uh, once you've incorporated the the hidden image and you can't unsee the what you now have learned to see so it's there in uh in that sense that you see the total image 
And the prompt number three to illustration three, think about this uh, as an exercise in perception uh, when you are looking at a poem by uh, a friend of mine named, uh, this is a form called Pantoon. And it's, um, and think about the, the image associated on, on the right hand side as a way of not just about what the poem is about, but maybe about how it was made. Okay, so read this poem, The Pantoon. Uh, I'll read it for you. To leave all this suffering, the moon will rise. The arms draw, the arm draws itself to draw even more. The moon will rise in the ever-chattering room to draw even more. The photographer's flashes in the ever-chattering room. Off the ceiling glances, the photographer's flashes. They capture silence for sleeping. Off the ceiling glances is an insult of form. They capture silence for sleeping in a web of sense. It is an insult of form, not necessarily formless, or in a web of sense do our inventions go. Necessarily formless, or to leave all the suffering, do our inventions go. The arm draws itself. So look at the illustration on the right-hand side of this, and you'll notice that um, while it may not necessarily uh, look like anything, it might look like something, but it may not necessarily be... Um, it's more or less about how the poem was created, uh, uh, the method by which it was created, right? Um, right and let's go over some of these questions for discussion key points. Um, what is the role of an artist? What would be his primary goal in creating art? Okay, so according to Oscar Wilde, the artist is firstly a creator of beautiful things. To reveal art and to conceal the artist is the art's, art's aim. This means that the art should never overstate its purpose and the artist's intention must remain hidden. The artist must remain maintain a level of artifice, artificiality, something that is not immediately apparent. The artist's primary goal in creating art should be the creation of beautiful things. Specifically, those who find beautiful meanings and beautiful things are the cultivated. For these, there is hope. They are able to express beautiful things and therefore are cultivated. Cultivated means the opposite of limited or restricted or provincial. The beautiful things can only be perceived by those who are cultivated. All right, so the second question is, what role should morality play in the creation of art? Morality is here defined as principles of morals designed to teach differences between good and bad behavior or good and evil. It teaches us how to behave along sanctioned codes. According to Oscar Wilde, there is no such thing as a moral or immoral book, as books are either poorly, either well or poorly written. This means morality has no place in art. Um, the see, the artist uses the moral life of man as the subject matter. How do we determine a good work of art from a bad one? There is a distinction between good and bad art. In good art, the artist is able to obscure the surf, the artifice, the artificialness of the art, meaning contrived and not spontaneous. And in bad art, the aim is always apparent. Four, what does the morality of art consist of? The morality of art consists of the perfect use of an imperfect medium, meaning that the artist is able to generously transform an imperfect subject matter that reaches its perfection. But two forms are effective models of other art forms. <clears throat> As per Oscar Wilde, from the point of view of form, the type of par excellence of all the arts is the, is the art of the musician. B, the musician finds in music the perfect use of an imperfect medium. The music form is part of the subject matter, but the imperfect use of the instrument is the most evident use type of form. Music is the perfect use of an instrument. Um... From the point of view of feeling, the actor's craft is the type, the nature of something by its category, the nature of the object. For an artist, thought, language, are instruments of an art. Vice, virtue, are to the artist materials for an art. When, is there, when there is diversity of opinion about a work of art, what does that say about it? <clears throat> does it mean that the work is new, complex, and vital? All right, so that ends our segment on Oscar Wilde's preface to Victoria Gray, and I'm going to continue on in this segment on, on Araby by James Joyce briefly. Okay, so um, to summarize, Araby by James Joyce 
In James Joyce's story, a young boy develops a crush on his friend's sister who lives across the street from him. The older girl becomes a new aspect in a familiar setting for him, and he finds himself preoccupied and obsessed to be in her presence. When she asks him if he plans to go to a bazaar named Araby, she, she, that she is unable to attend, the boy promise her, promises her to bring her something from this fair. He has the intense desire to impress her with a gift. After much anguish waiting, he finally receives the needed money, but arrives at Araby too late. As the event is shutting down, and he does not have enough money to buy something else. Araby had cast an eastern enchantment over the boy as an event that he anxiously awaited due to his desires and the frame of mind he was in. Upon arrival at the bazaar, the boy experienced an epiphany, standing alone in the dark hall of the closing event. How did this change the perception of himself and his surroundings? What is an epiphany? According to Joyce, it is a heightened realization about oneself that is triggered by an ordinary event. Um... So think about the time when you had yourself, uh, you know, where um, uh, there are moments when we have heightened awareness in their triggers, the things that trigger our awareness to be heightened for some reason. At this time, you know, we are all experiencing our awareness being heightened by um, the current situation in the world with the virus. And I think it's also possible that we're all kind of in our, mo in, our, in our own homes and thinking a lot about our awareness levels so he heightened and been due to this, um, this, these current, uh, the current outbreak, uh, pandemic, um, um, that maybe in, in the due course of things, people will come up with new ideas to prevent seeing things like this from happening again. So that's one example of how uh, an epiphany can be can used in, in that context. All right, so at the back of uh, the handout, uh, the lesson plan week eight, you'll see a list of MLA questions going back to the first segment. Uh, I'm going to post these in the quiz, uh, in the form of a quiz, so you can um, uh, work on some of these questions, and I'll send you the assignment link. And that ends this, this, this uh, two-part segment of uh, today's lesson and um, stay tuned uh, I'll see talk to you next time next week week nine or rather week 10 but we'll still be covering week nine all right so the, actually your homework for next week by the way is I'll just go ahead and tell you is to read um, uh, Muslim leader in Brooklyn uh, read Andrea Elliott's um, Muslim leader in Brooklyn reconciling two worlds page 568 and uh, write a Answer discussion questions, um, first set of discussion questions, and I'll post all this on Canvas. So, uh, and we'll continue discussing our how to, to assemble and um, format our research papers. And um, that, that'll, that's it. Have a good night.